Hello and welcome back to my channel guys. I hope you're having an amazing day. I am back today with a very small haul and the only reason I can say haul because there's more than one item otherwise I don't think you would even really qualify this as a haul but I did some shopping on the Essence end of year sale. I know we're in like February now so it feels really weird saying end of year sale considering the fact that it's at the beginning of a new year but Essence's end of year sales essentially just carry on until a lot of their stuff is sold out of stock so it is what it is. You also may notice a little bit of a change around in my background space. We just recently got some brand new bedside tables. This actually happened at like the perfect time. We got sent some from Walmart. They're actually really cute for Walmart and I was not expecting them to be this adorable and good quality. So hands off to Walmart. It's a collection by Queer Eye for Darrell Home. If you haven't seen my little TikTok video kind of like showing the transformation of the bedroom, I'll link it over here. It looks a little different in that video versus now because I had it kind of styled up specifically this side in this corner and Peter didn't really enjoy it that much so I kind of changed it up a little bit and we're redesigning it now so please forgive this background this will be a forever changing facade until we finally land on something that we actually like but yes different orientation I moved the camera around a little bit to get some more space over here and I don't know about you but I feel like the lighting is a little better from this side so let me know what you guys think if you enjoy it a little bit more I think it like lights up the space a little bit better okay back to the haul before I continue rambling and somebody gets mad at me so I purchased two things right off the bat spoiler alert Primarily, the very first thing that I got was actually some shoes from Magda Butram. Butram? Birch Buttram. I'm not exactly sure 100% how to say this, so please let me know down below if I butchered that name. I really like this brand. It's very minimal, classy, and for Mel's wedding, all the bridesmaids need to wear black shoes. So I have some black heels, but surprisingly, they're not that comfortable. I don't know why I've been collecting shoes that are just like not black, or at least not black dressy shoes. So I took this as an opportunity to pick up a pair that I felt would look good with the outfit, but also would feel comfortable enough that I could wear afterwards. So I spotted these ones. These are are the Estonia heel. They're a very, very simple sleek silhouette. It has a not really square, it's just like a flat toe in the top. Very simple band. This is satin, so I'm gonna have to be careful with it so that I don't damage them. And then roughly like a three inch at most heel height so that it's not too high for me and I can comfortably walk around in it. I am the maid of honor, so I probably will have to run around a little bit just to make sure everything gets done properly. So I wanted a heel that was like sexy and simple, but at the same time, not ankle breaking worthy. I went ahead and got these in the size 37 and a half because that was a recommended sizing on the website. Um, they don't fit. They're they're really big. I also did a little unboxing video on TikTok featuring these two. I'll also link it down below if you want to rewatch it. But essentially, it fit comfortably when I first put them on. And then after I walked around a little bit in them, not even walking around, after just like stepping in these shoes for a few minutes, my heels started to slide forward and it very comfortably fit into this toe box place. I have no issue with the main toe box here, but I had so much space in the back that I felt like my heels were slipping off when I was walking around. And I know that's going to be a risk for an ankle rolling because I have really, really weak ankles. That is not a good idea. I'm purely returning these back because they are too big for me. But otherwise, oh, the only other thing is because my feet slide forward, they no longer fit into the arch. I think if they fit these shoes perfectly, this would have been way more comfortable for me. And I have very high arches, so it's important for me to have something that supports it. Otherwise, it's going to be quite painful by the end of the day. I do want to point out, though, that the toe box up here is actually very comfortable. I was mildly concerned at first just because this is such a thin strap at the front. And I've had experience with shoes before where when the strap is thin it really cuts into the top of your foot especially as you're constantly walking around it's gonna like bend into the creases and just by the end of the night you're gonna have cuts and bruises and I don't want to be bleeding all over these shoes even though they're black I don't want to do that. So surprisingly, because there is a support coming down the side here, it's going to hold your, your toe knuckle, your toe bone. I don't know what that area of your foot is called. And on the other side where the pinky toe is too, you're not going to slip out of this. This actually helps to further prevent your foot from slipping out side to side, which is great design. Phenomenal. I do have to say, I'll give that to you, Magda Buttram. They're just the wrong size for me. I wish these fit. I'm going to have to stock the Essence site to see if they come back in my size. I may reorder them. They were on sale for a little over 50% off. I think around like 52 or 55% off which is a great deal. They are expensive shoes, like over $1,000. And I didn't really want to spend $1,000, even though I probably should be telling myself like it's worthwhile for black shoes because I can get a lot of wear out of them. But I just like didn't want to spend that much. If you guys are looking for a simple, sleek black heel that's also modern, very elegant, and fairly comfortable if you get the right size, these are great. And I think I would recommend them. It's just a shame they didn't fit. So I'll have to hunt for another pair. The next thing that I got has a little bit of a backstory. I'm gonna, I'll reveal it to you right off the bat so you guys are not mad at me. But I finally got my Max Mara 101-801 jacket and this is in the beautiful shade 
tobacco. It is a very rich brown that has warm tones running through it. If you've seen any of my shorts, then you'll know that I tried this on at the Max Mara store just to kind of get my sizing. And I'm very glad that I did that because I ended up sizing up in this jacket and it fits me perfectly. And I also tried on a bunch of colors. I actually originally wanted a more beigey color than this. But then when I saw this one pop up online, I was like, no, this, this color is meant to be. I also had a follow up opportunity to purchase this at the actual Max Mara boutique on Lore a few months ago before the holidays when I attended a Canfar event with them and it was like 10% off the whole store. I figured, am I gonna regret this if I don't buy it? And I figured, you know what? The jacket already is quite expensive. I am gonna hold off and wait. And when the time comes, the time comes, I'll purchase it. I also figured I'll just buy it when I go to Paris. At that point, it's like almost 50% off when you buy it there. So there's no point really trying to get just 10% off when you can literally get almost 50% off the coat in Europe. So I lost my opportunity there and I was like just a little bit bummed. But when I was stalking the Essence site, I saw, okay, originally not this coat, but this exact one, the 101801 in this like dark, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a dusty dark green taupey color. It's a very beautiful color. Also a neutral that you can mix and match and wear with a lot of outfits. I can definitely foresee myself wearing that with a lot of things since I wear some greens. It was like a stormy dark gray green. That's the best way I can explain it. And that was originally $48.90. I think that's the price for all of these jackets. And it was marked down to around $39.95 if I remember. So if I looked back, it was around like 20-ish percent off. And I was like, okay, that's not a bad price. It's definitely way cheaper than what I could have got in store for the 10% off. So I like hemmed and I hawed. And this was like really early on the end of year season. So I was like, let's just hold out, wait another month and see what happens. I'm very glad I did that because lo and behold, Hold, this specific shade popped up and this is the one that I have been dying for. I think now that I have one, I probably want, want more of them in different colors just because it fits so well and does exactly what I want it to do. I'm glad I held out and waited for this one instead of purchasing the other one. So this one actually popped up about last month at the end, close to the end of the sale because I feel like now that it's almost February, they're probably going to wrap it up. So if you want to take advantage of anything, now's probably the best time. And this was surprisingly for even deeper discount than that darky green color that I saw. That one was still being listed at 30 something. This was marked down to 35.70. And I was like, that doesn't seem right. Like this seems like a color most people would gravitate more towards than the other one. And they had so much in stock of every size, like at least two to three items left. And that's the good thing about Essence that I really like. They won't just say like low inventory. They'll let you know how many pieces are left so that you know whether or not you actually have a chance of getting it or if you can wait out a little bit longer and continue to watch it. Pro tip, save all the things that you want, not in your shopping cart, but into your wish list. Because in your shopping cart, sometimes, I don't know why, at least for me, I found that I've gone back and it's just like emptied on its own when things have sold out, which kind of sucks. But if you keep things in your wish list, you can actually see what the lowest price was when it was marked down before it sold. So that's good to keep in mind. So you can kind of track the trajectory of sales and prices for different brands. So you'll know when the best time is to take advantage of it. So I'm very glad I snatched this one up at $35.70. Full price is $48.90 after tax. At least for Canada, this comes out to around like 55 something after tax. On the sale price, it came down to around like 4,000. So I saved almost $1,500. And I believe it said it was around like 27% off. So I'm very, very happy with this jacket. That is a very long-winded spiel of how I came about to owning my very first Max Mara coat. This is probably the most expensive jacket that I own at the moment right now. I have a couple of like winter parkas that are pushing the $2,000 range, but this is by far the most expensive one. And I'm going to baby the shit out of it because I love it and she is beautiful and she encapsulates everything that I've wanted out of a wool jacket. That being said, I'm probably gonna try to sell a lot of my other ones that I don't wear anymore that are literally just collecting dust in my closet. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna be listing a ton of them in my Poshmark. I take really good care of my coats regardless if they're designer and expensive or not. So if you guys are in the market and you're interested in picking up a new to you one that has been well taken care of and you're roughly my size, I'm like an extra small, small. This is a good opportunity because a lot of them marked down to like 50 60 dollars from like at least three four hundred so it's a great sale my poshmark link will be down below so make sure you check that out but back to this jacket and why i am obsessed with this and i've been wanting this for a while so everybody online says that these jackets are insanely warm and you know what i don't disbelieve them but at the same time i wanted to see for myself because i mean it's a wool coat. It is thin. I have tons of wool coats on my own. They're all purchased from places like H&M, Zara, Massimo Duty, Mango, Evernew, Aritzia, RW, and like they're beautiful too all in their own right. 
and they are thin, but they're not made of high quality materials. And when I say high quality, like 100% wool, 100% cashmere, there's like alpaca wool. Apparently this one's beaver wool. I didn't know that was a thing. A lot of them are wool blends or polyester like plastic blends. And yes, they do keep you warm, but you still need to layer underneath and wear base layers and then have all these accessories like scarves and hats and mittens to keep yourself very warm in the winter time. I grew up in Ottawa, so I know what it's like to layer properly for a minus 40 degree and less winter. At least thankfully in Toronto where I was living before, it went down to like maybe minus 20 on a really bad day. We actually moved to Hamilton recently last summer. I don't know if I've officially ever really announced that anywhere. It doesn't really get too cold. Surprisingly, it's actually a little bit warmer than Toronto on a really bad day. It can touch down to minus 20, but on a decent winter, it's like minus 12 to like minus 15. So you still have to keep warm, but it's not like frigid Ottawa weathers. So I threw on this coat as soon as I received it. And within five minutes, I kid you not, I was sweating. And the only thing I was wearing underneath was like one layer, literally my pajamas like a t-shirt and my pajama bottoms I had this on I was walking around the house just to see how it would feel I was sweating buckets it is so beautifully lined on the inside I believe it's like a silk lining on the exterior it is the beaver wool and everything is like brushed to perfection it feels so smooth I was caught off guard with how smooth and soft this material was it kind of looks like a micro fleece when you look at it up close but it's so brushed that it feels like velvet and on your fingertips. I don't know how to explain it. It's very strange. Anyways, I digress. This jacket definitely will keep you warm. I don't know if this is gonna keep me warm in Ottawa. I'll have to definitely try it anytime I go back and let you guys know. I'll report back, don't worry. I will let you know if this is worthwhile of withstanding Canadian winters. I'm just glad that it actually is very warm on its own, even with just a t-shirt underneath, so I could foresee myself wearing a thick cardigan or sweater and going outside and staying nice and cozy. Another thing I truly loved about this jacket is the fact that it has extremely wide arms. Practicality wise, this is not something I noticed until I started accruing a lot of jackets of my own and I started getting really annoyed with them. So you guys know me, I love sweaters. I have a soft spot for them, especially thick knit chunky sweaters that have like really, really big sleeves. I have some that have balloon sleeves that bubble down to the wrist and they're cute and all and I can only really wear them in the fall winter. But when it comes to wearing them in the winter, I can't wear them with a lot of my tight wool jackets because as the sleeve gets down and slims towards your wrist, I can't shove my arm in there with my sweater. It just gets stuck around the elbow and it creates this huge like chunky buildup here that I can't even bend my arms. And it's just so uncomfortable, especially for the days when I'm trying to layer and stay warm and go outside for like a full day of events and meetings and hanging out with friends. It's just not conducive. So a lot of those jackets, I really had to think and plan out what jacket am I gonna wear? What am I gonna wear underneath? And how am I gonna layer them together to make sure I'm comfortable, but also warm at the same time. So I don't have to sacrifice either like fashion or functionality. When it comes to this jacket, as you can see, it has a very wide arm. It also has a really low drop armpit space here. It, I don't know if that's what you call it, from here to here. So if you have a sweater that has those dolman bat wing sleeves that comes out halfway through down your chest, you're not gonna feel like it's pulling up on the sides as you're shoving your arm into your jacket if the armpit area is like really tight, because that does happen sometimes. And then your midriff gets exposed and it's it's cold and it's just a whole thing in the winter time. When it comes down to winter dressing, there are logistics to this. And I think Canadians have truly master the art of layering and looking cute at the same time. And there's some pieces that are just like straight up nose you just don't do. Number one, first of all, wide sleeves. You can fit your thick chunky sweaters into them. And then number two, a really low drop for the armpit. So you can also wear sweaters that are low cropped when it comes to your sleeves. Points for that. It does come in a little bit at the wrist and it's rolled over beautifully. So it's not like it's flapping around loose in the wind. And if you do have a thicker sweater, it's going to comfortably sit here where you won't feel like it's wrapping around your wrist and like choking it. Second of all, it comes with a belt. Now, the strange thing about this jacket, so this is the belt and you'll see there's a reason why it's fully detached. This jacket has zero belt loops. There are none on the front or the back and on the sides either, which is a little bit strange you would say, but this jacket is actually designed to be worn either open or wrapped. So they do have a belt that you can wrap it shut if you need to. And because there are no belt loops, you do have to store it somewhere. There is this little loop on the back of the jacket here where you can actually hang the belt through when you're not wearing it so that you don't lose it. It's a little bit annoying though because I'm the type of person that when I don't wear my jackets fully wrapped, I kind of just hang it off the belt loops and let it drape down the sides and kind of like drag there. But in theory, as I've done that over the years, there's been a lot of times where the belts just like fall out of the loop. As I'm walking around, I get stuck on something or just like general movement and momentum, it slowly starts to slip out. So sometimes I actually have lost my belts in some of my jackets and I hate that. Whereas for this one, if I don't want to wear the belt, I am forced to hang it up in the back. I haven't tried wearing it with it hung up in the back yet to see if that's uncomfortable or not. I would say given that it's a brand with like 
decades of experience, it probably is comfortable. Otherwise they wouldn't design it like that, especially for a jacket that is this expensive. You would probably alienate your customer base if it's uncomfortable when you're wearing something hanging off the back of your neck. So that's something I do want to point out. If you are interested in purchasing this jacket, there are no belt loops on this. And I know it's a contentious factor for some people because a lot of people love this jacket, but I know when it comes to buying a designer ready to wear, it can be really anxiety driven to walk into a store and to know that you're putting on a $5,000 jacket. And I know people don't feel comfortable doing it. So I just want to share with you all the facts about this jacket if you're also interested in on the market for it. If you guys are also interested in like a full breakdown review of this jacket and what I love about it, let me know. I can definitely share and craft a whole kind of like research video of my experience and sharing my thoughts on it because I think that would be helpful for anybody else who's out there interested. I know I definitely did a lot of research and most of the information I got was off of like purse forum, strangely enough, where people were sharing their facts about the jacket. So the other thing I like about this are the buttons. A lot of their jackets can either come in these like tortoiseshell buttons or there's like all black ones or there's all beige ones. I've tried some of these jackets on with the black buttons and as beautiful as the jacket is, I just feel like the contrast between one solid color and just black kind of cheapens the look of the jacket overall. I don't know why. It just gives me a very, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this. It just looks very like fast fashion sometimes. Personally, I think tortoiseshell really elevates the look, which is why I was happy that this specific one was on sale as opposed to another one that was just all black. I already knew off the bat, I was not going to buy a jacket that had black buttons. I just wanted something that kind of fit the whole neutral palette. It just looks less stark when it's black for some reason. The tortoiseshell really blends it in the coat and makes it look a little bit more, not rich, but elegant and sophisticated. So I'm very happy that it has these ones. It is double breasted. You can wear it either way if you want. There's button loops on this side and also on that side. So you can button up either way, depending on your preference. And then on the inside here, it is fully lined with silk. I don't know if I can show you this. It's actually really cute because it has the Max Mara logo all the way down the inside. There's a little piece of fabric sewn into here that kind of tells you information about the jacket and apparently this jacket was designed since 1981 so it's been around for a little while I would say what is that I can't even count in my head like 40 some years now 42 years they know their stuff when it comes to jackets there's also a little hidden compartment pocket in here I don't really put anything in this just because if I'm wearing a jacket outside in the winter I don't want to constantly have to open it to take things in and out of but if you want you can put your wallet in here your phone any valuables and in terms of other pockets there are just two front pockets on either side that are sewn in underneath they're not that deep though so I wouldn't necessarily use Use these pockets to store a lot of your valuables. Definitely bring a purse or use your pant pockets or use the interior pockets if you want to store anything. I personally would like if these pockets were a little bit deeper, kind of sucks that they're not, but I feel like that would also ruin the integrity of the jacket and the lining and it would stretch out the wool if you were stuffing it full of things. So that's probably a reason why they have such shallow pockets to discourage you overstuffing your jacket. Overall, I think this jacket is beautifully made. All the seams and this specific shade at least use stitching of the exact same color of the wool. So it's very well hidden and and everything is lined. There are no exposed seams inside of here. Everything has been like folded inside and you definitely should be getting a jacket made to this craftsmanship level if you're paying that much for it. That is my little Max Mara jacket that I've added to my collection. I've looked into a couple of the other ones like the Manuela one. Ethel coat is beautiful too. I've also definitely looked at the Teddy coat. I know the Teddy coat had a huge resurgence in popularity like four to five years ago when everybody was like loving it. You guys didn't know Max Mara was one of like the OGs of the Teddy coat designs. I I think even though that the trend for the teddy coat has waned, I would still love to add one of the iconic teddy coats into my collection eventually one day. For myself, it's also just a piece of fashion history. So I think I would love to own one in now, especially knowing how warm these jackets are. So do I love this coat? Yes. Do I love those shoes? Yes. The shoes will be going back because they don't fit. The coat will be staying because I'm so happy I finally got one in my size, color. Oh, I also forgot to mention, if you're interested, I sized up in this. I'm usually like a 34 when it comes to ready to wear, but I got a 36 just because I tried to 34 and I found that the sleeves were a little bit short on me. I have long arms and long limbs to begin with. I've always known this, but most jackets and outerwear I find are pretty okay when it comes to arm length. This one surprisingly was shorter than I liked. So I sized up. It has still a very masculine overall overcoat look to it. So I don't think it looks like you're drowning in fabric if you do size up, but with just one size up, the length instantly was long enough in the uh, sleeve that it was able to come down to my wrist and I don't feel like I have to worry about exposed wrists in the wintertime getting cold and having to bring mittens or gloves with me. So that's just a tip there. Make sure you try on this jacket before you buy it just so you are familiar with the whole fit because it may be different on you than it is for me. I prefer to size up. Take that info with a grain of salt and let me know if you guys also had the same issue or if you were able to purchase in your regular true size. That is it for my little mini essence haul and when I say mini I literally mean mini because I only got two things. I had a shop basket 
full of a bunch of other stuff that was like phenomenally marked down too. There were some like beautiful Jacquemus pieces that were like 80% off, but um, you know what? I love them and I think they're great. I was really gunning for an iconic permanent piece in my collection and that's kind of what I'm trying to do right now. Add some more timeless ready to wear pieces that I know I'm gonna gravitate towards over and over again, not just trend fashion pieces. Although I still will pick up some trend fashion pieces here and there. That's currently what I added to my collection and I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini haul. Let me know what you guys think. If you have also purchased Magda Butram pieces before, if you like their shoes, if you have a personal recommendation as to which size fits you the best, just so I can go off of that for help. And if you guys have any other Max Mara pieces of your own, I would love to hear any Max Mara enthusiasts. I recently just got into the brand a little bit more. I have a pair of gloves, cashmere gloves that I purchased from them that are like so soft and warm. Probably gonna have to pair them with this jacket to make a little outfit video for you guys. Oh, also let me know if you do want that full review video of this jacket or like how to style a jacket like this so you can get some like outfit styling tips for the winter because I know winter sucks and it's hard to dress cute. But yeah, thank you so much for coming back for my video. If you guys want to see more of me, you know where to find me on Instagram and on TikTok. I post on those two platforms a little bit more frequently than YouTube, but you know, we're family here, there, and everywhere. And I'm just glad that you guys are here to watch my videos. And I will see you guys in the next one next week. Have an amazing day. Love you guys. Bye.